Paulo Costa fans, if you guys are watching this video, comment down below. Tell me how it is being a Paulo Costa fan. I used to be a pretty big fan of Paulo Costa back when he was fighting Uriah Hall, back when he was fighting Yoel Romero. But the later he goes on with his fighting career, I just feel like he's got one foot out the door. I really do. And stay, stick with me for this video. Let me at least explain why I feel like that. Uh, guys, before I get into the video, please consider liking and subscribing as I bring a ton of MMA content out every week, at least four videos. So like and subscribe if you want to watch my MMA content. Now, back to Paulo Costa. He has fought once per year since 2018. 2018, he fights Uriah Hall. 2019, he fights Yoel. 2020, Israel. 2021, Marvin. 2022, Luke Rockhold, and it's looking like in 2023, he's not going to fight anyone as he has just been medically pulled from his bout at UFC 294 against Hamzat Chemaev. Now, Paulo Costa has had a lot of canceled fights. As I am counting, it looks like he has had five of them in the last three years. And I kind of want to go over his last couple fights and just kind of discuss his career the last couple years because I feel like he's just not in it to be a champion anymore. So let's go ahead and get started. He loses his title fight to Israel Adesanya at UFC 253 in September of 2020. You know, Israel Adesanya is a great fighter. No shame in that loss whatsoever. I'm not here to shame Paulo Costa, you know, for losing fights. I just want to talk about the fight inconsistencies and just getting him into the fight, okay? He then is linked to a fight with Robert Whitaker in April of 2021, yet it's canceled for unknown reasons. Whitaker claims that it is on Paulo Costa, that he just doesn't want to fight. Whitaker is confident that the fight is not going to happen, and because Paulo Costa is either, you know, pulling out or just having issues with contract negotiation, so he moves on. Whitaker moves on and leaves Paulo Costa behind. A couple months later, in August of 2021, he is linked to a fight with Jared Cannonier. And Jared Cannonier comes out and says the fight is not happening because there is a pay dispute between Paulo Costa and the UFC. Understandable. Jared Cannonier says he understands. Doesn't really, you know, have any bad blood over it. He just moves on as well. Then, later in 2021, October, Paulo Costa is finally fighting Marvin Vittori, so he must have got his pay issues worked out with the UFC or he compromised or whatever. He shows up to the fight over 20 pounds overweight and casually mentions to the press uh, on his pre-fight press conference, I think it was like three or four days before the fight, that he hopes the UFC can make it at light heavyweight because he's 20 pounds overweight and he hasn't told the UFC yet. So then the next couple of days, the fight may not even happen. Finally, it happens at light heavyweight. Paulo Costa loses to Marvin Vittori despite outweighing him by over 20 pounds because Marvin Vittori showed up on weight. So, there was that. He is then linked to a bout with Luke Rockhold in July of 2022, yet the bout has to be canceled and moved to August for unknown Paulo Costa reasons. This is what Luke Rockhold said. The fight happens, Paulo Costa wins, he beats Luke Rockhold, which was a really fun, entertaining fight, by the way. Go watch that fight if you have it. It's insane. He's coming off a, a decent one now over Luke Rockhold. He is then linked to a bout with Ikram Aliskarov at UFC 291, July of 2023. Yet, almost as soon as that fight is announced, it is canceled for unknown Paulo Costa reasons. I don't know. He then is scheduled to fight Hamzat Shmaev at UFC 294, October 2023. He shows up to the to Fight Island, and he has an injury to his elbow that he had surgery on weeks before. He's having issues with the elbow, and the doctors medically pull him from the fight. Now, I am not here to shit on Paulo Costa. I'm really, I'm really not. I'm really not. I don't want to shit on Paulo Costa. And if he got medically pulled from the fight, which from all indications, it's seeing that he has been, then absolutely he should not be fighting. He, he, if he's getting medically pulled, I don't want fighters fighting if they're unsafe, if they're, you know, if they're ill, if they're not fit to compete. That's what the, you know, the doctors are there for. No issue with that whatsoever. 
However, I know a lot of fans are having an issue with this because of the inconsistency with his fights, the constant canceled bouts, and then with the elbow itself, it just seems like it could have been handled a little bit better earlier on. That's all I'm going to say on the elbow and this latest one. But with these last canceled fights, it's like, man, I've got to be, I'm, I'm worried about Paulo Costa fans because that's got to be a stressful time for Paulo Costa fans. You know, hearing that he's getting a, you know, a fight, there's a fight announcement. And then you're, you're wondering, you're like, mm, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it to the fight? I don't know. I don't know. For whatever reason, I'm not saying these reasons are even his fault. You know, the elbow, pay issues, um, whatever it may be. I'm not even saying these are his fault. I'm just saying as a fan and as a promoter, as like a boss, when you sign Paulo Costa to fight, when you hear that your favorite fighter Paulo Costa is fighting, I feel like a lot of fans are wondering, hmm, is he actually going to make it? Is the fight actually going to happen? And from the UFC's perspective, I wonder how that is for logistical reasons. Like, are they going to have a backup fighter for Paulo Costa every time he fights? Is Paulo Costa going to be treated like a championship bout where we have to have a backup because you don't know what's going to happen with him. That's all That's all I'm discussing here. And I have to say, I think Paulo Costa is the most unreliable UFC fighter when it comes to just getting to the actual fight. I'm not even talking about winning or performing well. He normally performs pretty well. Even in that Vittori loss where he was 20 pounds overweight, he still looked good. It was a great fight. The fight with Luke Rockhold was absolutely a terrific. Great fight. But you've just got to wonder, is this guy going to make it to the fight? And if he does make it to the fight, is he going to show up on over 20 pounds overweight? I'm just saying, Paulo Costa is a very inconsistent fighter. And this is my last point I'm going to bring up on him. I feel like he's got one foot out the door. I really do. I, I, I think that Israel Adesanya loss, I think he thought he was going to go in there and just bulldoze Adesanya. And when that didn't happen, I, I think he... After that fight, he had one foot out the door after that fight. I really do. I think he came into the Vittori fight half-cocked, didn't even try to make 185 pounds, just showed up and was like, yeah, I hope you guys make the fight at light heavyweight because I'm, you know, 20 pounds overweight. You know, and then he, he comes back after the Vittori fight and he fights Luke Rockhold, who hasn't fought in three years and is coming off two knockout losses. Has a pretty tough fight with Luke Rockhold, wins it though. And then, you know, we've got an, uh, a canceled Ikram Aliskarov bout. And I think he did truly prepare well for Hamzat Chemaev, but he had to know getting surgery five weeks before his fight on his elbow isn't a good idea. I mean, if he needed the surgery bad enough, why not just pull out of the fight? Why, why, I just don't understand why we're gonna have elbow surgery and then go to Abu Dhabi and act like we're gonna fight when you know you're probably going to get pulled by the doctors because your your elbow was you know terribly infected and you're having issues with it and you had surgery on it, I just I don't understand Paulo Costa's uh, career plan right now. I really I really don't I really don't get it. I I really question if he wants to even be a champion anymore. You know, is he trying to be one of the best guys in the UFC? Is he trying to be the middleweight champion? Is he trying to be a you know top contender? I don't know. I don't know. I, I I almost wonder if he is just kind of fighting every once in a while to make a bit of money and to keep his name relevant and to keep growing his social media presence. I, I truly wonder that. I truly wonder that. I'm going to conclude this bit video by saying I wish the best for Paulo Costa. I truly do. I am not a Paulo Costa hater. I want Paulo Costa to be healthy. I want him to make plenty of money for fight per fight. And I want to see him come in at 185 pounds and be focused and fight a good contender. I want to see him do that. I want to see him succeed. I think the middleweight division is better with Paulo Costa in the top fighting good contenders. I don't think it's good with him being ranked number six, not fighting contenders, pulling out of fights, you know, showing up to fight and then getting pulled by the doctors. And that's very unfortunate. And I hope he's safe. I hope his arm is okay. But it's just unfortunate for his fans. It really is. It really is. There's so many. I, I've just wondered from Apollo Costa fans perspective, how is it for you? How is it for you? Because I'm not going to lie. I like Justin Gaethje. If Justin Gaethje 
had this amount of canceled belts and inconsistencies, and he's pulling out, and he's showing up, you know, at weigh-ins, 170 pounds. I'd be very, it would be very hard to be a Justin Gaethje fan in that case. I'm just being honest. I think about this a lot. I really do. I think about this a lot, how, how the Paulo Costa fans feel. So, guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, y'all.